Hello all, this is a public sample reading, but this is a little bit different. I don't think I've, I don't know if I've actually ever posted a uh, solar return reading publicly. Um, this is different than a birth chart reading. It's not gonna be as long. We're not delving into this person's entire personality and their life story. This is a much shorter reading that is really just designed to give a brief overview of what to expect for a person's year. So if you are interested in getting this type of reading, I do need a little bit more information than a typical reading. I will need not only your birth date, time and place, but also the general location that you either were at for the previous birthday, which started the year that you'd like me to talk about, or if you want me to talk about the next year for you, starting from your next birthday, I'll need to know your general location for your next birthday. And it doesn't have to be anything super like revealing or creepy. Um, even if you just gave me, you know, a nearby city within an hour or two drive, that would be fine. That would be totally accurate. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really fun. Uh, this is actually my least expensive type of reading. So it's just a really fun, easy way to get a great idea of what to expect for your year. Or if you're already in the midst of your year, it's still worthwhile just to see kind of what themes you'll be dealing with all year, what themes you may have already been dealing with. I always say that <clears throat> we start to experience the themes of our solar return chart up to a month or two before our actual birthday. <clears throat> so for this person, I know that your birthday is tomorrow at the time of my making this video so happy birthday happy early birthday um, the solar return always happens around one's birthday but it can be as much as a day or two before or after a person's birthday so in this case although your birthday is Oct august i almost said october i'm sorry <laughs> although your birthday is august 24th this year your solar return technically speaking, is actually Friday, August 23rd, 2024 at 4.06 p.m. And I'm using, well, I won't say the location because I want to keep this, I want to keep that information private. Um, but um, yeah, I forgot what else was I saying. So, so at the time, you know, because this is pretty much your birthday, um, the themes I'm about to describe, you should definitely already be experiencing if this reading is accurate, which I hope it is. Most of my readings are accurate, at least I'm told. Um, okay, so let's get into <clears throat> the actual reading. So I forgot to explain the premise of what it is. It's a solar return. It's basically the chart of the moment that the sun returns to the exact position it was at when you were born relative to the ecliptic. So in other words, um, you were born with sun at one degree Virgo. <clears throat> Therefore, every single solar return you ever have will have the sun at, at one degree Virgo. So there's not a whole lot of meaning that we get from the sun sign, but we can still get a lot of meaning from the other, you know, the positions of the other planets, um, the house of the sun, the houses of the other planets, the ascendant. And really the two placements that I think sum up your year <clears throat> more than any other placement in a solar return chart is... Um, they're the moon and the ascendant. For you, there's a clear pattern that emerges here because the ascendant is in Sagittarius and the moon is actually at the last degree of Aries. So with both the moon and the ascendant in fire signs for you, for your solar return, this means that you're really starting a new chapter in a very dramatic way. Um, and I already, you know, I, I know this person, I already know a little bit about your life and I can already see that that's pretty evident. Um, <laughs> I already, you know, so I guess you could argue that I'm cheating a little bit, but, <clears throat> but yeah, Aries and Sagittarius, you are starting a new cycle, lots of beginnings, lots of initiation. You may be a little bit more focused on yourself and your own goals, your own desires as you go on to this year and really just starting out a completely new chapter. You know, you have a new horizon, you are pioneering, you're venturing out into the unknown and doing something uh, really dramatically new for yourself. So I think that's very exciting. I think fire signs can be fun. Um, hopefully that's universal to some extent. Um, <clears throat> but I would say generally speaking, um, it can be fun energy. It can be exciting uh, because everything is so new. You know, it's very dramatic, it's very exhilarating. Uh, what else can we talk about? Let's look at the inner planets a little bit. So because the sun is always at the same place for every solar return that you have, Mercury and Venus will always be nearby. So for you personally, you'll always have Mercury in either Leo or Virgo. You have the sun very, you know, at the very beginning of Virgo. 
Um, so about half the time Mercury will be in Leo, half the time Mercury will be in Virgo. And Venus will usually be in Virgo or Leo as well, although technically it could be as far away as Cancer or Libra. Um, but for this year, you have Mercury still retrograde in Leo at the time of your birthday or solar return, I guess I should say. And then Venus in Virgo. So I think this is a little bit, I don't want to say difficult, but uh, Mercury and Venus are both a little bit out of place. You know, Mercury is still retrograde, so that is different. I know that you don't have Mercury retrograde natally, so that is a little bit of a, you know, it's an unusual energy. It's something to adjust to. Um, and Mercury is in Leo, so that's another fire placement. So that, that again supports you, you know, it, it supports the speculation that you are focusing on yourself and entering a very new phase. However, with Mercury retrograde, that suggests that you're doing a lot of soul searching this year and you may learn a lot about your past or you may also be kind of wrapping up loose ends and, I don't know, dealing with your past, dealing with past issues, past themes, people from your past becoming more relevant or popping back up in your life. But at the same time, again, because there are so many fire placements here, you're still going in a completely new direction. It, you, you know, I don't want to paint the picture of, you know, this isn't a year where you're just completely dwelling on the past. That's not it at all. It's more about dealing with the past, tying up loose ends so that you can kind of move on. I think that's um, really what's going on here. So very, I think that's very exciting. Um, Let's see what else. Venus is in Virgo, which is a more challenging placement. Venus is in fall there, so it's kind of um, debilitated. Uh, but, you know, you have Sun in Virgo natally, so it's still positive having Venus in your own sign. Um, that means that you are shining very brightly, especially because, you know, this chart is for just after 4 p.m. You know, the Sun, Mercury, and Venus are still very high in the chart. Venus in particular is in the ninth house. So that means that you're really shining very brightly, like in public, um, in public with your reputation, with your career, you may have a lot of pleasure there and others are perceiving you as, you know, being pleasant, being pleasurable. They're enjoying your company, um, on those fields. So that's, that's really excellent. It's really great to have. Um, I think it's great to have planets in general at the top of the chart, but especially Venus, Venus is specifically in the ninth house though. So that's showing that you're really enjoying learning. Um, you may be, I don't know, seeking some kind of higher education or maybe getting new credentials, doing some kind of like training programs, researching different topics. And it could be really anything. It could be something job related. It could be metaphysical. It could be kind of any kind of learning, any kind of in-depth or like abstract, deep learning, again, job related. Um, you know, so that, that could be an area of pleasure for you, an area of success for you this year. Sun and Mercury are both in the eighth house though, which is much different. <clears throat> that's showing that you're really focusing a lot on your finances this year. And with Mercury retrograde in your eighth house, that's showing that you're rethinking your finances, like, um, decisions that you've made in the past. I, I don't know how long in the past, if it was recent or if it was many years ago, but there may have been some major financial decisions that you've made in the past that you're rethinking now or looking back on now. Maybe you just have a new perspective that you're gaining this year, or, you know, maybe you're revamping those decisions, kind of tweaking those commitments or contracts, uh, rethinking those things. And with Sun in the eighth house, it shows that, that this is a huge focus for you. Um, you know, just kind of taking a look at all your commitments, obligations, contracts, financial agreements, um, you know, maybe making new agreements, new obligations or, or commitments. Um, it's not just financial either. It could be, you know, um, how are you, what kind of agreements have you made with other people, other institutions or organizations? Again, much of that is financial, but it could be emotionally too. Like, who are you investing your time with? You know, who have you, I don't know, agreed to cooperate with? So that could be other relationships as well. You know, whether those are professional relationships, personal relationships, those are areas that you might be focusing on a lot more. You know, you're really energizing those areas this year. And, um, and again, maybe kind of rethinking them, changing them, updating them, uh, making new agreements, new commitments, etc. Something is something that's kind of interesting that I actually noticed when I first pulled up your chart is you have um, the Jupiter and Mars have been conjunct in Gemini. And because you have Sagittarius rising for this solar return, you have Mars and Jupiter conjunct the descendant. So 
it's a bit of a trade-off when you have planets conjunct the descendant. Let's talk about Jupiter first, since Jupiter is more, it's it's actually very tightly conjunct the descendant. So that's the more intense um, energy here. So Jupiter is a benefic. It expands. It brings, you know, success to wherever it is. And having that on the descendant is kind of, it's kind of bittersweet. There's a good side of it and there's a bad side of it. There's two different ways you can interpret it that I'm aware of. Um, what should I give you first? I'll give you, let's give you the bad. I mean, it's not really bad necessarily, but we'll do the the more negative side first and then the positive. So the more negative side of it is that the ascendant represents you. So this year you are kind of like Sagittarius. You're adventurous, you're optimistic, you know, you're pioneering, etc. You are kind of Sagittarius. That's your identity this year. Um, so when Jupiter is on the descendant, that means it's opposing you. It's all the way opposite you. So that means that luck, that abundance is kind of at odds with you. Um, you know, when you have planets opposing you like that, it can make it feel like the world is slightly against you. I don't want you to take that too seriously though, because still, you know, remember we have to take that into account with everything else I just said. So this is just one detail in a larger picture. Like I've already painted this picture of all these new new beginnings and you're shining brightly in your reputation. Like all of that is still true. Like this this chart looks I think it looks pretty fun. There's a lot going on that's really positive here. However, Jupiter being on the descendant, that does indicate that when it comes to the luck and the expansion, it's basically it's still there for you this year, but it's in other people's hands is kind of how it is like and that's what leads me to the second way that you could interpret this which is if the ascendant is what you're all about on the left side of the chart the descendant on the right side of the chart is other people it's how you see other people and it's also your relationships your partnerships um you know your partner is kind of symbolized by the descendant so having jupiter which is all about luck and expansion on the descendant that means that the way that you're going to experience luck and expansion will largely be through your relationships like through your partnership through other you know social relationships um <clears throat> you know and oftentimes astrology gets complicated because by seeing what's going on with the descendant we can actually see what's going on with your partner if that makes sense <clears throat> and i know that you have a, a relationship right now so so i'll just say that you know jupiter on the descendant suggests a lot of expansion and luck for your partner basically and you will experience that you'll just experience it through them if that makes sense so there still is luck and expansion for you. It's just coming to you kind of vicariously or indirectly, if that makes sense. So that's good news for your partner. Uh, it's good news for you through your relationship. You know, Jupiter on the descendant suggests having a lot of luck and expansion through your relationship in general. So you, you could have a, I don't know, a flourishing, like blossoming relationship, having a lot of fun there, maybe having some kind of sense of adventure through your relationship. Um, so again, that is very positive. It's just... You know, I think ideally we'd like all the luck and expansion to be on us, like, directly. Um, but having it shower on your partner is definitely not the worst thing in the world either. Um, but I do want to mention Mars as well. So Mars conjunct Jupiter, that's a really powerful dynamic. There's a lot of luck and expansion, um, a lot of potential for success and getting what we want from that combination. And and again, for you, it's still tied on your, um, your descendant, your relationships. Um, so again, you know, Mars has to do with your drive, your ambition. I always say Mars is a double-edged sword because it is what drives us. Like Mars can be very sexy, but Mars can also be combative or irritating. So having that on your descendant, that's a mixed bag. Um, Jupiter is still there. So let me simplify this. So, um, I still think, you know, your relationship looks overwhelmingly positive. That's the main, that's, I mean, Jupiter on the descendant, that's very powerful, uh, really overwhelming success and expansion through your relationship but with mars there there's also this like sexual or like slightly competitive you know mars is tense and that tension like you can have good tension or you can have bad tension you know what i mean it's kind of a mixed bag you know i think it can be fun if we kind of go with it uh, but it can also be you know we can be slightly what's the word like i don't want to say irritated because that's too strong of a word but like I think tense is a good word. Um, so that's also affecting your um, relationship, you know. So I'm not, hopefully that doesn't sound, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. I mean, because like I said, Mars can be tense, but it can also just be very sexual, you know. So it just, it depends. So I, I'll leave that alone. Um, but yeah, Mars and Jupiter, a lot of expansion through your relationships. 
And it's not just about your romantic relationship. It could be about interactions that you have with people, you know, on a much more shallow level or even on a professional level. Um, you know, a different way of interpreting this would be to say descendant represents the people that you naturally attract this year. And with Jupiter and Mars on the descendant, that means that you're going to be ex attracting to yourself really successful people, optimistic people, adventurous people, <clears throat> people that are very outgoing and lively and humorous, you know. Um, with Mars there, I guess the only downside would be you could attract people that are too, too positive, like they are maybe a little bit reckless or maybe competitive. That would be the only downside, but I still think this would be largely very positive. You're attracting people that are successful, driven, positive. Um, yeah, and let me kind of just briefly look around the rest of the chart. <clears throat> I like to keep these things short because I find them to be the most accurate when they're shorter. When I first learned about solar returns, I really did dive into like the nuances and, and I found it to be less and less accurate the more like nuanced I got. Um, the main, the really strong thing that dominates any solar return chart is the moon and the ascendant. So that's what I really want you to remember. It's a fire sign year for you. Uh, you are Sagittarius, you are Aries to some extent as well. Um, it's about you. It's about starting something new. That's that's by far the most dominant energy here. <clears throat> um, but what else can we talk about? You have South Node pretty close to the mid event, so that also suggests um, you're very you're very much in your comfort zone when it comes to your career and your reputation. It looks like a very positive year for you <clears throat> on those fronts. A lot of success there. Um, let's kind of just briefly look through the outer planets, I guess. Um, Pluto is in your second house, so that suggests you might be revolutionizing the way you deal with your income and how you support yourself. That could be really dramatically changing on a fundamental level for you this year. Um, you have Saturn and Neptune and North Node all in the third house, which is a kind of funky, it's a funky combination. Um, so that points to challenges and delusion <clears throat> with your, like, friends like your your acquaintances neighbors <clears throat> these kind of like shallow casual connections in your life may be challenged delayed confusing <laughs> and it, that's why i say it's a really funky setup because this would typically be a very like low-key <clears throat> kind of easygoing part of your life but you have some heavy planets there and and the north node as well so um so yeah, I don't want you to think too much about that because the third house is not, it's not a major part of the chart. It's kind of tucked away at the bottom. So not a big deal at all, but I did, I did just want to throw that out there. Um, and last thing I'll say here is that Uranus is in the fifth house. So that would suggest to you also kind of revolutionizing your creative projects. How do you have fun? Where is your playful energy, your creative energy? Uh, you know, how do you express yourself through your creativity? All of those areas may be subject to dramatic and unpredictable changes for you this year. Um, that might sound, I guess, dramatic. I guess, yeah, I mean, it is dramatic. It is dramatic, but this is also in kind of a subtle part of the chart. It's not something that's dominating your entire life <clears throat> this year. So I want to make that very clear. Um, there could be some really exciting changes for your creative projects. But again, that's not what this year is mostly about. <clears throat> I think the 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 takeaways the main takeaways I see are really exciting year of new beginnings uh really strong relationship focus and success in your career so yeah what more could you ask for um so I hope this resonates for you like I said it should already resonate for you at the time of my making this so it should make sense hopefully uh, but yeah have a fantastic birthday and a fantastic year. It really does look like a very fun chart. So I hope this year is excellent for you. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. And again, if anyone else wants a reading, definitely hit me up. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day.